Are you wondering how to host a Zoom call for the first time? In this video, I share easy steps so that you can reach out and connect online using Zoom. It's a great tool to know about as you're staying close to home during the coronavirus outbreak. I'm Marcia Chadley and I use Zoom for the Creative Life Center with one-on-one -on -one conversations and group gatherings. It's a really good alternative to being together in person and it really it doesn't take very long until you're comfortable using it and even hosting meetings that's what you'll find out today i'm going to start by sharing the basics of hosting a zoom meeting and then at the end of the video i'm going to show you how to share your screen so if you want to share a document or a video or a picture with people on your call you'll be able to do that so after this video you'll know how to host a Zoom call and be ready to have fun connecting online. Social distancing doesn't mean that we still can't get together and enjoy each other. So let's get you started. To get yourself a Zoom account and then also to download the app either on your computer or your tablet or your smartphone. Since you're hosting, I would suggest you be on a tablet or a computer, but you can also do it from your smartphone. There are, there's a free Zoom account and there are paid Zoom accounts. The free account will do a lot of things. You can talk to one other person for as long as you want on the video call. If you have more than two people, you're limited to 40 minutes. So if you want to do a Zoom call with more than two people and you want it to last longer than 40 minutes, you'll want to get one of the paid plans. And you can look at those on the plans and pricing part and we're on zoom.us. I've actually gone to the download page because once you have your account set up, your username, your password, you will want to come here if you want to download the app for your computer. Otherwise, look in the app store on your phone and the app may be called Zoom Cloud Meetings. See what you find there or Zoom Client for Meetings. They use both names. So the next thing you're going to want to do is open up your app. It's asking me to sign in because I'm not yet logged in. If you're already signed in, you won't have to do this step. Sometimes this is the hardest one to get your password in correctly. Here's the app. You're signed in. You can tell because you will either be up there as a picture or whatever little icon to mean you are in. This is my Zoom app account. And I want to schedule my meeting. So I click on this schedule button. Now I can call it whatever I want. I can set up the date. I can set up the time I want to start it. And I say how long I want to last. I want it to last. Now these are ideas of when it is basically so that when you send the invitation to everybody, they know what you are thinking in terms of when you start and finish but you aren't bound to these times. You can actually start your call earlier. You can end it earlier or later as long as you stay within your plan. I would suggest you generate your meeting ID automatically. And what that means is that the link that people will be sent to join your meeting will be different each time. So you won't have someone who has been at an old meeting with you using that link and coming into a new meeting you're having. I would do you generate your meeting ID automatically. I don't usually require a password. You can do that if you want. I like to have the host, which would be you, your video on when you join the meeting. The participants also to be on. I allow people to either call in from the phone or use their computer audio. And I've set this up to be other calendars because I want to show you what happens when Zoom does not try to automatically add it to a calendar. If you want to automatically add it to your Google Calendar or to Outlook, you can pick those and play around with that. Advanced options. You can let people wait in a waiting room until you start the call, if they join before you've started it. You can also let them actually be in the call before you get on. I usually don't do either of those two things. And what that means is if I haven't started the meeting yet and someone tries to get in, then they get a message that says that I haven't started the meeting yet, but Zoom will let them know and put them in as soon as I do start it. I tend to find that works better for me. 
I usually mute everybody on entry, otherwise you can get some interesting feedback things going on, and I don't automatically record the meeting. So pretty easy. Put in these things however you want, and then I'm going to move this up so you can see the schedule button. You're going to schedule, and that's it. It's scheduled. Now here is the invitation. And what the invitation is, is it tells me the date, the time I've got the meeting scheduled for. This is the URL, the link in a web browser for someone to join the meeting. If they want to call in, here are the numbers they can call from. Here's the meeting ID that they will be requested to provide so that they're sent to the correct meeting. So I can copy all that to my clipboard. I can go into email or text or whatever I want to do and send this information out to the people that are going to be invited to the meeting, including myself. could set up a calendar event. This is the information that everyone will need to have. So now that I have scheduled a meeting, if we go back into my app, you'll see that it's listed here. And if I go into meetings, I would have a whole list of all the meetings, like here's one I had earlier today. From the app, this is the Zoom app we're in right now, you can start your meeting. You can see the meeting invitation in case you want to refresh yourself, your memory or you want to send it to somebody else. You can also edit the meeting and you can delete it. So as soon as you are ready to go, when it's time to start the meeting, you click this button. Now normally I will start the actual Zoom meeting five to ten minutes before I've told people I will start it, just so I'm there as they get on. But if you have the free version and you want to make sure you can use every one of those 40 minutes that you have, just wait till it's time, click start, and your meeting will start. After you click the start button, you're going to end up seeing something like this. You can see yourself back here. And there's a little dialogue asking if you want to join with your computer audio, which means that the um, you will be able to hear using your computer. So I say yes to that. And now the call is open and set up. You can see I'm talking. You can see I'm I'm, I'm have my microphone going. I'm if I wanted to mute myself, I would click that to mute myself. Unclick it to hear me. I can stop my video. In one case you can hear me but you can't see me. Let's come back. Now everybody has those same options along the bottom of their screen. Sometimes the options go away when your cursor is not in the window and then you have to move your cursor down here and then you'll see them. So our next step is we want to get some more people into this meeting. So now we've had somebody join our call and I'm in what's known that right now as the gallery view. So as many people as who are on this call, we would each have our own little picture here. You could see everybody at once. There can be up to 49 people shown. And depending on how big you've made this window, you see that the picture's larger or smaller. You can also switch to what's known as a speaker view. And we do that in the upper right hand corner. The speaker view, you will have one large picture and then everybody else will be in small pictures across the top. Normally this large picture is whoever is speaking and the other people that are listening will be across the top and you can scroll through them. Because of the way that I'm recording my screen, it's not showing me as large, but normally I would be shown large here. So I'm going to go back to the gallery view. The things I want you to know about the bottom of the screen, especially as somebody just getting starting hosting Zoom calls, we know about the muting and the stopping the video. You can manage participants. And then also there's a chat window. So let's just open up the chat window. You can type in notes. People can type back and forth to each other. The manage participant window is only available to you as a host. Everybody can see the chat window. And in the manage participants window, you can see yourself. You can mute yourself that way if you want to. You can see the other people who are on the call. And you have the ability to unmute them and to mute them. And you can also stop their video. So you can take care of helping other people if they need it, if they're having trouble. 
Most important part of this window is you can mute everybody. Sometimes you'll get a lot of background noise or some feedback and you need to just quickly mute everybody. It does not mute you, it, it mutes all the rest of the people on the call. Very important thing that you're gonna to wanna to know about. And I wanna show you a couple of more advanced features that you may want to use once you really get comfortable with things. I've made our window a little bit bigger so that all the features are available across the bottom of the page here, the bottom of our window. Sometimes when people have their Zoom windows open, if you move your cursor out of the bottom, these different controls are hidden. You just move your cursor down here again and they will show up. We've looked at the chat, we've looked at the managing participants. I'd like you to see that there's the ability to record these Zoom calls if you want. It will record both audio and video and put it onto your computer or tablet. You do not have this option on your telephone because it would take up too much space. So you will not be able to record on a phone. The other one I'd like to talk to you about is sharing your screen. You might want to share a document, a PowerPoint, a video, a picture. You have that ability. Click on that share. You choose what you want to share. Click the share button. And now everybody is actually seeing this picture. You just have, you know, because this green line is around it, that that's what they're seeing. At the top of your screen now, all those, the mute, the stop video, manage participants, all those things are now at the top of your screen. And what's really important is this stop share button. So when you click that, you will stop sharing and you'll go back to being able to see the Zoom window and so will everybody else. So that's it, you are all set. You know how to open up your Zoom app, schedule a meeting, invite people, and once they're here, you know how to manage them. You know how to mute people, you know how to help them turn their, um, unmute them so that they can talk. You know how to do your own video and muting, and you know how to switch from speaker view into the gallery view. Have some fun, try this out, and see what you enjoy the best.